we went to the Earth Day Expo in Texas to catch up with some of the students who participated in last year's solar race. I feel like my favorite part is just how much it mimics an actual driving, like an actual car. It's actually a really pleasant surprise that's promoted here in Texas and it's as big as it is. I'm the EV Angelist. I'm spreading the good news of electric vehicles. I don't have an EV car yet, but I do want to have one pretty soon. What is your dream EV car? Oh, uh, the Tesla Plaid, for sure. The one that they have over there, actually. It's sweet. In 1990, the American Solar Challenge was born, originally called Sun Race USA. This race was created in an effort to promote automotive engineering and solar energy among college students. If you watched our series, Solar Chariots, you'll see that this is the exact car that was used during the race. So this car has actually driven over 2,000 miles in the Midwest sun. How fast can you get it? Highway speeds. Yeah. Really? So you can get this thing up to like 70 miles an hour? Yeah. It's mostly about reducing drag. We have a limited amount of energy that we can get from the solar panels, and it's very important to not waste that on pushing air and only use it for moving the car. Ride the sun so that we gain power and we lose that same amount of power wasn't long before we met Dr. Lehman Marks, founder of the Solar Car Challenge Foundation. Well, I founded the high school solar car program back in 1990. So 33 years now of building solar cars. Uh, I started off six foot two and see what's happened to me. We have worked with more than 70,000 kids in 38 states to try to help motivate in science and engineering and technology and alternative energy. We're in the solar car challenge, the high school teams that build their solar cars. We had 5,700 school kids come through yesterday. They saw things they've never seen before. They met people they would never have an opportunity to meet before, and that's important to us. We are so happy Percipia came this year. It's the first year that I've had a college team here, but we've had our solar car challenge with our high school teams here for 12 years. I knew about solar car all the way up through high school. It was kind of a dream of mine to be able to join the team since I knew it had mechanical programming and just it could do anything I wanted on that team. That's how kind of how I fell in love with it. I'm taking engineering classes, but nothing beats the actual practical experience of an actual project. What the hell just happened? <laughs> Guys, it's just not risky. I'm so mistaken. I'd like to help make it right. This incident with the chase van and the solar panels got wrecked. Kind of walk me through what happened there. What happened was our chase vehicle driver kind of fainted at the wheel just slightly. It's called a traffic accident. Was that broken? We had to replace 75 solar cells. She kind of ran in the back of the car, kind of damaging our solar panels. We built the car in three days. We can fix the solar panel in the night. We thankfully had a large set of these kind of panels. We stayed up until 3 a.m. preparing the, those back arrays. And for that day, even though we had that accident, we still had the most amount of miles for that day. You felt you learned more just kind of working out in the field with this thing than you ever did in any sort of like studies or courses. Absolutely, like classes can teach you the technical material, but they do not prepare you for the mindset of, oh, I've worked like 40 hours on this one thing. Oh, it blew up, oh well. You can learn stuff, you can practice stuff, but that still doesn't prepare you for what you encounter. In the sense that things happen and you're like, okay, we didn't really plan for this, but we still have to deal with it anyway, and we still have to do really well. You don't always know what to do, and that's part of the challenge, is identifying problems and solving them. In a classroom, it's usually you're handed an assignment, solve it. But in this, you might ask your professor, what do I do here? And they're like, I don't know, figure it out. For a lot of people, that's kind of the difficult stage, right? Um, the part where you don't know what to do and where you can't find a starting point. Um, but I find that to be more fun than the part where you actually know what you're doing and where you have like a set like timeline just because there's so much to be learned, right? There's some skills that you're gonna learn and encounter along the way that you might not use for that specific project, but it'll be handy later on. What they've learned is the kind of life skills of commitment and dedication and not give up when something goes wrong. That's one of the real strengths of this project. 